Hello there, welcome to the Ogre, the old Git Reacts, Reviews and Off Times Reminiscences. Uh, today we're doing something I didn't expect I'd be doing, to be honest, uh, and it's Motorhead and Overkill. Um, so why are you doing it, Matt? Oh, well, let me tell you. Um, over the years, I've seen one or two reactions, one or two, three or four, uh, five or six reactions to uh, Overkill in a live setting. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with those reactions. Uh, for me, though, they've missed a trick in they haven't come across the, the best, or I can say the best, considered to be the best um, footage of a motorhead overkill song um i think i found the best uh i'd found it years before um getting into reaction videos um and um it's an album or it's, it's footage that uh, has been spliced together really uh moog bass has done a, a wonderful job and you'll all thank him afterwards uh for this um He's got uh, concert footage of Motorhead at the uh, Theatre Royal at Nottingham and spliced it with the audio for Overkill from No Sleep from Hammersmith al album. Um, and it's a glorious result. Um, and for me, it best typifies the loudness. You, you can never, ever, uh, um, on a video, I, I don't think, truly represent the, the loudness of a motorhead concert in those days um but this is is the closest i've found that gets anywhere near it um so you can uh relish relish the experience in a minute um and you're talking about loudness i can remember coming back from motorhead concerts um back in the day from this period really uh and you you go to work the day after or after a weekend and there'd be some rocker i won't say old rocker because they weren't that much older than me but you know at that age you thought they were old gits but um they uh they'd be into earlier sort of rock music and into the specifications and whatever and they'd say oh mac what was the what of the pa and you go you what uh and that was motorhead from that period so let's not miss a boot um if i can possibly do this without Make it look too amateurish, which ain't gonna happen. Let's go with uh, this. That's got to be one of the best intros to any uh, song ever uh, of any genre, um, but certainly, you know, that grabs your attention. Um, <laughs> I have to laugh as, as well. I think it's probably one of the most, um, one of the best intros. That is also one of the most profound choruses you will ever find in a song in a, anywhere. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, that grabs your attention. And I think you get a sense here in comparison to the other videos, this is uh, of the loudness you, you know you appreciate this is this has been mixed and mastered to to be able to hear the song <laughs> um but uh in those days you felt the song more than heard it very often um yes um it's weird for me because most i was a snotty punky rocker back in those days and um motorhead were one of the few uh, bands from outside that genre that i'll give time of day to I originally heard them at a um somebody had an 18th birthday party something like that it's a, it's a pavilion and and it would bring your own beer and what have you and they had um, a reasonable stereo going in there playing most of the stuff i liked um and the the soul headbanger turned up with his freshly acquired as it was over kill ep uh, ep lp and uh was quite insistent upon playing it and we was all saying bugger off now you're not no, get away. Um, eventually, his persistence won, and he put um, put the album on. And to be fair, as soon as I heard Overkill, um, I was sort of sort of um, swayed well into uh, wanting to hear some more. Um, albeit, I didn't like everything on the album, but certainly Overkill 
um, to this day still resonates. But uh, anyway, enough history for now. Might be a bit more later. Let's listen to some more of this. The thing about motorhead of course is that um certain songs like this are songs you can sing along to now most of the stuff i listen to nowadays you can't even understand what the lyrics are let alone sing along to them um and so um this is where you, you when you're at one of these concerts you've got that inclusiveness of being able to sing along and um sort of with everybody else that's there um who's not too drunk or whatever to uh <laughs> accompany you um but the atmosphere of these gigs was, was tremendous. Um, back, these, back in the times when a, you know, a concert gig was actually dark, and even with all the, the lighting on display here, including the, the infamous bomber rig, um, it's still dark and uh, has that sort of basement club atmosphere still, even though it's in, in, a, in a quite a big, uh, or relatively big venue compared to you know the basement clubs and whatever you... Um, Again, it, an all, organic experience sounds a bit wanky to be honest, but it was, it was an organic experience. You um, you sort of um, oh God, it sounds like a hippie, but you became became one, became one with the um, the whole ambiance in there. Um, you couldn't talk to anybody because you couldn't hear a word they said. Um, so you may as well just uh, embrace the whole thing and um, just be subsumed by it. Um consumed by it whichever is the right expression um yes People played bass like that in those days.
video struggles with loudness at times. So there you go. Just for nostalgia's sake, I thought I'd uh, put up my old, oldest rock relic, my Motorhead Ace uh, up your sleeve tour uh, t-shirt. <laughs> Just a, a whimsical thing to do, maybe. But um, yes, um, end of that song is the song that keeps on giving it that you uh, didn't know when it was going to end uh, upon first listening. Um, not quite as many endings as on the album, I don't think. Um, but nonetheless, still glorious and still... Um, Gave you that little bit more. You always want a little bit more on a song like that, don't you? And they, and they certainly did give you it uh, at the end. Um, so yeah, hopefully that uh, gave you a bit of a, um, a hint um, of what being at a early days Motorhead concert was like. That latter day, uh, I'm afraid, due to uh, health and safety and all that malarkey and uh, the size of the venues uh, and whatever, I've I, I never heard anything quite like it again uh, my experience of uh, the earliest experience for me for motorhead was uh, this tour uh, which was accompanying the uh, ace of spades um, album but um fucking hell that was loud as well you know it was incredibly loud and again um if you didn't know the songs you you would probably never be able to make them out at all but uh, glorious stuff nonetheless um so yes, um, for me, uh, I don't get to arguments about what the best lineup for Motorhead was because uh, each lineup has, has its own treasures, um, and not everything that that lineup did was uh, floated my boat, to be honest. Um, but nonetheless, being that of that age of that time, that is my favourite lineup with a favourite so most favourite songs, even though actually later albums were more consistent um as far as what i liked on them um yeah so uh you wonder uh, whether or not um now they've all gone they've got the contract for uh thunder in storms you can just imagine uh the great one saying uh these these thunderstorms the storm that I'm uh, creating don't sound loud enough. Who's going to make them louder for me? Oh, there's one gentleman, two, three gentlemen now to make a racket. Uh, boys, come over here. Just how loud can you go? So uh, next time your windows get put through from a particularly loud storm, uh, maybe, maybe it's just uh, that lineup um, reunited, making an inglorious racket. Anyway. There you go. Hopefully um, you enjoyed that. Um, I say a bit of a diversion for me. I wasn't going to do this, but um, I think uh, listening to that again gave me just re just reward anyway. So do the clicky bollocks if you want, um, and I'll catch you next time for some more uh, earwax removal. Cheerio.